previously on Last episode, we did a quick and dirty cleanup on the carbs to see if, you know, the bike would run, and it goes pretty good. The next day, I decided to fiddle around with it, and uh, things just weren't right. So the bowls were leaking on me again, and cylinders three and four weren't running at all. They were flooded out. My goal with this bike is to restore it to its former glory, and half clean carbs really isn't a good way to start this project. So I've got them pulled for a more thorough rebuild. Uh, running the bike for a little while gave light to some other common CB400 issues too. The previous owner replaced the head gasket, and there's evidence of that. You can see the freshly cleaned surface right around the mating area. And the oil's uh, baked on the cylinders too, so you know it leaked in the past at least. After getting the bike hot, you can see that the head gasket's kind of wet, and that means it's failing again. So we'll be replacing that too. We Bike Japan's got some heavy-duty gasket uh, that we can run for the head, and it's got co copper crushes around the oil orifice, so hopefully with a visit to the machine shop and the new gasket, we can eliminate this issue. You could run the bike with the leak, and it'd run just fine, but I'd like to have the bike clean and pretty, you know, without oil running down the side of it. It's not, uh, it's not a Harley. Another obvious issue on this bike is the brake caliper drags in the front. It's really hard to push it around and it doesn't stop so good. And it's also not assembled correctly. You can see the bolts are backed out here and probably just to get it running, but I want it to stop correctly. The tires are old and they are original as far as I can tell. They look surprisingly good, but they definitely need to be replaced. They're almost 50 years old at this point. The chrome wheels are probably the worst piece on this bike, and if they don't clean up, then I'm inclined to replace them, and I have little faith in my ability to true a wheel, so fingers crossed that they come out okay. Just a recap, uh, the plan here is to rebuild the brakes, rebuild the carbs, put a new head gasket on, resurface the head, and put new tires on. We'll, uh, shine it up as we go and if we uncover more issues then obviously we'll take care of that too Oh, yum. That's actually, you know, not as bad as I thought.
I think if you're already watching this channel, you probably know brake fluid's nasty stuff. It will eat paint. Um, that's why these are usually not so pretty. This is pretty neat. You can see the original uh, mark on there for when they assembled it. We have this bolt, hard line dripping here in the bottle. When I crack this, I'm hoping that most of it will run out and we'll get this line mostly empty. I'm gonna replace these lines. You should replace any old rubber lines and not if they're 70 or 40 or 50 years old, but you know, if they're older than 20 years, they definitely need to be replaced. My BMW, it's very common for people to have their brakes lock up because these hoses just get, they start to come apart inside. So just because it feels good today doesn't mean that it's gonna not leave you stranded someday. So don't mess with your brakes. Make sure that you know, you're doing your due diligence there. Looks okay to me so far, nothing too surprising. We will have to see as we get deeper. Curious about these cam chain sliders, as usual. <clears throat> My nemesis. Something to note on these bikes, and really any bike I suppose, but especially this one, because on twin cylinders, it doesn't matter as much. The head is just much smaller and things are less consequential. I'm glad that I looked at the manual before I started to take this head off because it specifies removing the outer, loosening these guys in a crisscross pattern. And I assume that's to prevent it from warping, which makes sense. Um, but I don't want to unintentionally cause any problems and it's always good to look at the service manual. That's really all I'm trying to say. And hopefully that, you know, resonates with some of you folks. I know some folks fly by night or they've done so much of this that they know how to go through everything without a manual. I'm just that type of person who likes to look at it. Something else that I noticed on this bike and I remember reading about it and 
The cam chain tensioner design is similar to the CB360 that I had before, but it's backwards, I guess. Um, or actually, it's not backwards now that I think about it. I think they're the same. Uh, but it's really weird after working on some other bikes now that, you know, I've seen it. So this is our t tensioner, and then this is our slipper on this side. This is really just, or a follower, I guess, if you will. It's really just there to uh, prevent any uh, slapping of this chain, which I'm not entirely sure if this is tight enough. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter right now. We'll fix it later, but it's a little bit loose. So I'm interesting to see how those slippers are. But anyway, you adjust the cam chain tension, come on, down here, for the tensioner over here. So there's a little cup like this and it'll swing up and then you hold it. Um, I think this bike, if I remember right, says to adjust the cam chain while it's running. I've always been told not to do that. However, if the manual says to do it, we'll you know, do some checking, ask the old guys on the forum and that sort of thing. But uh, just interesting, a little tidbit. So uh, next we're gonna take the uh, cam chain sprocket off and we'll rotate it. It says to rotate it with the crankshaft and the points cover, but I'm going to use the Kickstarter because I am lazy and I don't feel like taking that apart. It's two bolts, but still. And then I think we should be about home free. Um, I think that these are head bolts as well. They just have a pocket for a screw for the rocker box. So, so far I don't see anything unusual, but there's always plenty of time for that.
So now that we've got the head off, I wanted to look at the cylinders as one does. It's a little hard to tell. It looks like there is some, perhaps light scoring. That one looks a little deeper, right in there. Not sure how concerned we ought to be. I've not done a compression test. I assume that this bike has been run on less than four cylinders a couple of times in its life be my guess. Oh, focus. Come on. You can see. Come on, little guy. There we go. See there. It doesn't look as bad. Try to get you in on these cylinders. You can still see a lot of the cross hatch. I'm sure that these are pretty fine. The wear marks there, I can still see the cross hatches through that. I don't really plan on honing these at all. I mean, I might. If someone tells me it has to be done. There's nothing you can really feel on any of these. But uh, very tired and <laughs> I think it's about time to close up shop for the evening. So appreciate it guys. Good morning, folks. Good afternoon. Whatever time of day, week it is. Uh, it's the morning for me. And kind of back and forth going between Kentucky and Ohio. And <clears throat> I need to get this into the shop. And if I'm going to get it into the shop, then I need to get everything stripped. I'm going to leave the valves in. Uh, we're going to take the springs off, but give them the valves so they can lap them and everything. Um, it's a little bit of scratchiness in here, but I think we're going to let that ride. I guess I can show you. I've got a cool new mount. Get right in there. Look at that. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not. not too bad, but it's not a perfect surface. I'm sure this is normal on these guys. I could measure it, but probably not going to. That, that one's kind of a deep, but I don't know. Someone can come in the comments and tell me that it's totally roached and I need a new one, but now I think we're going to leave it. Maybe just 
just some debris they got in there. Anyway, we're going to take off our intakes. Then we're going to take out the valves. I'm going to learn how to use a valve spring compressor for the first time. And I've got this handy little box labeled so I don't lose everything. More specifically, so that we don't put things back where they don't belong. Um, let's see. Nope, that is too big. That's just right. These old JIS screws, you know, you gotta be careful with them or they'll strip. So. Use the impact driver and that helps alleviate some of those problems. I think, there we go. Pop them loose. Nice and easy. There we go. These are the vacuum ports. I need to purchase some kind of adapter to sync those carbs. aren't super stuck. That's not good. It's starting to get boogered up. I don't like where this is going, but. are. Got a little nervous there. Delios too. There, I think these were the ones that were replaced, but they're not doing their job. So, Let's see if I can get these guys out without boogering them up.
we're going to attempt to remove these valves. And I say attempt primarily because I've never done this before. So you're going to watch me struggle and learn right along. Let's see. I think this is the one we want. We want the smaller one. The large one doesn't get around the cap. I guess it would technically work either way. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Ah, shoot. One of them big hornets, but... So I got, probably shouldn't do that. Let's see if I can get it to focus. And this big old boy, these guys have been all over my house. Whew. Now he's down in my engine. All right. Third time, fourth time, what have you. Uh, we're doing this here. I have not ever removed valves or used valve spring compressor. I don't think that it's that difficult, but we're gonna do it together. And you all can laugh at me or tell me how I'm doing it wrong, whichever way. There's a little cup well, so if you look at the valves, there's these little divots. And I assume that part of the reason is to do uh, the valve spring compression. It's probably not the only reason. But uh, anyway, we'll see if this cheap China kit gets us through or if it causes me pain and I suppose both things could be the case huh so it looks like the valve keepers are coming out and turn the auto focus up. I guess I can't turn that off, but uh, let's see if we can get y'all in there. Um, I'm going to use this dirty magnet. So get these keepers out. Usually they'll suck up. They're not not quite there. So we got to. Do a little bit more. There they go. And then bam, we got our keepers. All right, now, hopefully this don't blow up in my face. I guess I can zoom you all out. That would be a little bit easier. Just trying to do all these different camera modes and get the best shot for YouTube. Still very much a learning experience for me. So we got our little beehives. We're gonna put that in the one bin. And there's our little um, and it's a long day. It's our little valve guide. Uh, valve seal there valve stem seal. There we go. And our valve will come out. A little bit of carbon. Feels like it's got a pretty good fit up in there.
no perceptible play. So we'll get lined up for our next one. There are probably 20 million better videos for this, but you know, it can be done in the garage on your own without paying somebody if you want. Well, the ball detent broke on my stupid cheap Amazon China kit. You can see here. It's like, what's on the end of my magnet? You can just buy it once and have the pain over with, or you can just keep buying it and keep having the pain. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that's what I'm finding out right now. So that's great. I love that. I don't know why I'm cleaning it up though. It's going to go to the <clears throat> machine shop and they're going to clean it up for us. But I did want to yoink one of these guys and destroy it. Well, that's one way to do it. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're putting valves seals on the exhaust without getting new valves, valve guides, what have you. Yep, don't look too bad. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is some of the wear in here and talk to several people who didn't think it was a big deal. This one's definitely a little more scored than the others, but I've seen other bikes that were much worse. Um, as long as you know, we make sure it doesn't continue. It should be fine. So there we go. Empty head, except for the guides ready for the uh, machine shop. They're going to tank it and blast it and uh, hand it back over and spruced up shape, which I'll feel a little bit bad because <laughs> the, the jug's not going to be as clean as the head, but, um, you know, could I go in there and hone all that stuff and redo it all? Yeah. Do I want to? No. You know, it's just uh, how much of a project is each one of these bikes going to be? And I guess if I really end up liking it, then, you know, we'll take it back apart at some point and redo the whole thing big time. So. Anyway, I think this is probably a good stopping point. This is our speedometer cable. And it seems like it's in good shape. Who knows? Probably should be replaced, but it's in pretty good shape. So I'm going to leave it until it breaks. Yeah, 
And just like that, our wheel is free. Free at last. Probably never been taken off this bike since it was new. Crazy to think about. Something else to note since I'm just sitting here thinking without music because YouTube would bust me for copyright. If you are building a cafe racer, if you're taking one of these bikes and chopping it to bits, which, you know, it's your bike, you do what you want with it. Um, you need a fork brace. Uh, that fender serves that purpose as well as, you know, being chrome and pretty. It uh, It is not just there to be pretty. It's also there to help stabilize this bike. So they make aftermarket fork braces for this bike, I believe. And um, most bikes are not going to come with aftermarket fork braces. So you can have one fabricated or if you wanna just chop this fender and just save the reinforced part here, that's probably fine too. This feels like it's got Loctite on it, which would make sense because it's part of the braking system. I feel like these brakes are really primitive, but <laughs> Honda used them on a lot of bikes and it was a big selling factor, I believe, for a lot of those bikes to have the option for a disc brake. Okay, and there we go, how about that? So you can see here some of this is a little rusty and a little crusty, but now that it's off the bike, we'll hit it with uh, some chrome polish and I'll probably use a brass brush. Just to, it helps knock that uh, rust out of the pitting there. And I mean, there is, you know, they're not perfect. Uh, it's not quite museum quality. It's good from far and far from good, but There we go. Get us a cold snack real quick, and then we're going to remove the fork tubes. Actually, before we remove the fork tubes, we're going to remove the fork caps, which are down here, I believe. They are 24 millimeters. That doesn't look like 24. Maybe 19 or 17 something. We'll we'll Google it. By Google it, I mean I'm gonna try different sockets until one fits. 17 millimeters. I love when uh, you know I don't need anything special for this. Not that a 24 is that special, but you know. Oh yeah, that's never been taken off. That's good. Good and sticky. That's what she said, question mark. I don't know what I can say on YouTube. I'll say it again, just cause we're here. Do not ever over tighten these. They have a torque value, especially these top triples. If you over tighten them, if you wrench down on it, you can't even see what I'm talking about. If you wrench down on these guys, they will uh, break. You may get replacement bolts up here just because they're a little rusty. It doesn't matter, but this bike's pretty enough that uh, I want it to keep being pretty. I'm not saying my standards aren't high or anything, just You know, no sense in polishing a turd. You'll just go broke, nickel and a diamond yourself, trying to find all the parts, trying to get it looking perfect. And then inevitably you'll move on to something else. And when you do, you're gonna be very disappointed because you're gonna be asking money for things that uh, only you cared about. It's kind of like when, you know, people fix their cars and buy all the cool bits and then 
are surprised when people don't want to pay extra for that. So these forks are a little crusty. This actually has a little bit of grease on it, which I'm interested in if that's factory or you know what, but again, you can see a little bit of pitting. I can feel it. I'm a little concerned about it, but uh, we're going to clean it up with the brush and really could do steel wool as well. All of it's fine. Um, well, not all of it's fine. Some of it's very coarse, but you know, we'll get, uh, get to unsealing these forks here. Actually, these are a little wore out. I mean, they're fine, but we're better off just replacing them. Look at that. Have you ever seen a fork seal that's, you know, 40, 50 years old? I mean, this isn't 50 years old, but you know, uh, in that good a shape? Because I haven't. Next thing we got to do is there should be an Allen bolt. Yep, right under here. If I can point it at the camera. Yeah, I'm gonna pop that loose. Sometimes do it on the bike. And before we do anything else, I need to get something to empty this fork oil. I'm just taking this top cap off here. Some really crusty O-rings in there. Not too bad. Tell you what, there is nothing quite like the smell of old fork oil. On the bottom, we have our drain. I think you guys are getting used to the drill by now. And then we're going to do something that looks mildly phallic and uh, empty the juice out. Ah, was on there good. Good little snap. Oh, that's gross. That's actually pretty, actually it's not that gross. It's kind of clear and there's a lot of metallic schmoo at the bottom. So that might be the best looking 50 year old fork oil, you know, all, all told. Um, oh, sh shoot. I wasn't expecting that much of a spritz. I did say we were going to do something mildly phallic, so... May even just flush this out a little bit. Um, Carbon choke cleaner, parts cleaner, uh, solves every problem. Let's go ahead and get that nasty spring out of there. And go to town. Not good for the clear coat, but it's fine.
that did the trick. That did the trick. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like the longer I do this, the better I am at figuring stuff out. Uh, I'm sure something else will bite me in the tail for saying that out loud, but you know, it is what it is. So what did I do with my Allen? Or we'll just finish it out with this. Finally, geez. Probably shouldn't let that drop on the ground, but that's what it is. The prize. The other prize. Now we're gonna actually remove the seal itself. So there's a retaining ring in there. And then we need to pry the seal out. These usually don't come out without heat, but I always try them without heat the first time. So we'll see. think that one's going to come. Oh, there we go. See if this screwdriver is sturdy enough for a fork seal. She's coming. <clears throat> I know you folks can't see much here, but uh... bam, crimson. Thank you, Ashland Oil. These uh, super cheap fork seals from four into one, I have my doubts. <laughs> I don't know, they don't seem like the nicest quality fork seals I've ever bought, but you know, I could be wrong. Um, I'm just greasing them up so they go down in easier. Probably have to use the old seal or a socket or something to send it home. Um, if you're ever confused, these newer styles, they kind of, you know, the old style, it's pretty obvious which end is the top, but um, some of the newer ones, it's less obvious. The, the numbers always go up is what I was told. Now you could use a seal driver kit here. You obviously don't want to damage the screws or the, uh, or not the screws, the springs. Or just drop it 57 million times. Getting me mallet.
Could send it all the way home, but. other seal in there you know I think we got enough room for our snap ring perhaps looking pretty good let's see if she goes home I'm calling that good ladies and gentlemen And we'll start on the next one. Should have done this in the first place. Just kind of quit playing around. Give it a little bit of the carb sauce here. There's dirt up in here. I'll let you all see what it looks like. Rusty water. Um, that tubey bit's down in there. Let's see. Whoop. Neat little camera effect, but not, uh, you know, not exactly zooming in there. There you go. Uh, we'll just get that cleaned out, knocked out, what have you. Next stage is just going to be uh, cleaning out these <clears throat> fork tubes a little bit because they have some crud in them. I'm just going to hose them out with some carb cleaner once again. A couple little spots catching on my fingernail. I just want to be judicious make sure that we're not wasting our time doing fork seals to do them again and I think we're pretty safe on the brush you know usually the brass doesn't scratch anything and that's part of why I like to use it but I have seen you know in some cases where it will or maybe I'm imagining it I don't know Not perfect, but oh, well, you all haven't been able to see half of this, have you? Couple of tiny little worrisome spots. Just trying to knock any of those spots down that I can feel. With the razor, you can pretty much see them. Maybe you guys can see now. Oh, I mean, they already are pretty clean, but there's, uh, you know, some crud on there. Camera makes them look cleaner than they really are, but. I think that's where we're calling it for tonight. I'm Good morning, YouTube. I don't know what time it is there, but for me, it's the morning. So we've got some work to do. I need to leave this afternoon, preferably early afternoon. And uh, Lieutenant Dan got no legs, so we need to correct that. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. Most of these go together kind of the same way. Um, typically, I believe the smaller end goes first. We have our cap that needs to go in the very bottom. So we'll go sort of in this order. Uh, 
and we'll retain. So this will hang out of here. This is kind of like our bump stop, sort of. And I'll drop it. And then basically like this. And then our other spring goes right here. So not terribly complicated. This is technically the piston. This is your little piston ring. I've never replaced one. I'm sure that I've had some that need replacing. Not gonna worry about it on this guy because it's pretty low miles. And if I keep it, we're probably gonna use some fork emulators or some kind of way to improve the uh, general performance of this bike from a suspension perspective. Everybody goes for, uh, you know, engine upgrades first, but um, suspension's really underrated on bikes. I've never had a bike that uh, I didn't love more with good suspension on it. There we go. This is always the tricky part, getting this guy down in there just so it sits in that little flange. Get these dang bugs out of here. We don't need much anyway. I just need enough to coat that. Those threads. We just don't want any fork juice leaking out of the bottom here. Copper washer that goes in here that makes sure that these seal up good. I just want to make sure this is a problem for me the next time that I do it, you know. That should be good and tight. Doesn't feel good and loose. <clears throat> All right, so next piece, I'm going to do the other side here. Then we need 160 cc's of fork oil. <clears throat> and I have an older, I'm gonna use this cause it has a stopper. I did the thing, forgot to put the dust seals on. It's okay. We can recover. I was looking like we got some progress. Now for the part that uh, I've been dreading. The tires. Now I'm sure everybody will have opinions about how I do this and really I, you know, shoot away. I don't, I don't mind. Uh, I'm new to this and it's not my favorite thing to do. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the valve stem core, valve core, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. The thingy in the middle of the Schrader valve that holds the air in.
still pretty pliable. I bet, uh, you know, I guess an emergency. <laughs> Should you ever use this? No way. If I was stranded on the side of the road, maybe. That didn't have to be so hard, did it? There's a little bit of rust, presumably from sitting for ages. Um, might clean up these edges in here while I've got a chance. I don't know how it comes across on the camera, but it doesn't even look like the same wheel. <laughs> uh, this side's the bad side, so. Now for the reveal. Oh, I think I can live with this. It's a heck of a lot better. Do you guys recognize this wheel? Cause I don't. I thought it was a little further gone. But also usually when I've got wheels like this, they've got, uh, you know, someone's fiddled with them and scrubbed them and worn away all the chrome and This one's not so much of that. I'll get this valve stem here a little bit better. Just because I won't have the chance to after we put the valve on. Stuff does not taste good, I'll tell you that. Now I'm kind of going to dirty this up, but man, I can't get over how much better it looks. Holy crap. Wow. Look at that. Decent. Sometimes you can just pop these on and I just kind of greased up this Uh, wheel here. Don't know if that's going to be the case today.
you know what? We forgot to put the new rim strip on. Can I do that with the tire half installed? I'm gonna try. This is why I could never go to the moon or something. I'd be like, whoops, I forgot to hit that one important button. <laughs> I guess we don't have air now. You know, I don't know. Something like that. Uh, wouldn't, I, I don't think it would be a good idea. I just, and my brain's too all over the place. I get too ahead of myself, too excited. We want to get one side down in here. Bead Buddy goes in here and it just really keeps that tire down in there. Now the moment of truth, do I go home? <laughs> Did I pinch it? Probably. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Look at that. I did it. Now we gotta get the bead to seat. Hot damn. <laughs> How much pressure is in this tire? All of it. And I think we need more. More. All right. I have very low space remaining. That's not good. All right, gloves are coming off for this one. We gotta pull out the big guns, and by that I mean our tire spray is going to be Donja soap. Hate this part. It's always more pressure than <clears throat> I think it should be. <laughs> um, I've been told it's fine. I don't feel fine with it, but it is what it is. I think that side is good. Bah. Uh, I think we're gonna call it good. I'm probably a little bit paranoid, but. And I'm sure I'll polish this a bunch more before uh, you know, I call it, call it good anyway, so. We'll just get some of the harder to reach spots since it's off the mic. Hey folks, recording had to be cut a little bit short just because I am short on time and I'm short on space. So I'm only recording with my phone up here and I ran a little over today 
And as a consequence, I have about seven minutes of time left to record, which isn't enough to finish recording the reassembly of the front end of this bike. So as you can see, it's pretty well completed and looking pretty sharp, honestly. Uh, just need to get that front brake caliper put back together, get that brake assembly rebuilt. We'll have our carbs rebuilt. And hopefully sometime next week the head will be done and we'll be able to get started. So, you know, from there it's just kind of putting the Lego blocks back together, hopefully. And uh, then she'll be in running condition. And hopefully when we get this rear wheel changed out and cleaned up, it'll just really pop. So until next time, friends.